Well, hi, I'm Senator Jim Inhofe. Well, tonight we heard President Obama's last State of the Union address before the 2012 election. And it was a campaign stump speech. We all know that. It's clear that President Obama believes the best way to keep his job is to continue to promote class warfare in America and blame Republicans in Congress. And not surprisingly, he took credit for uh, successes that he has actively fought against. After three years of failed economic policies, record deficits, uh, layers of, of, of back-breaking regulations, President Obama just doesn't get it. Tonight we heard about more government programs and more government spending. President Obama wants to pay for all of this by increasing taxes and by cutting defense. His uh, defense cuts uh, began in 2009. I'm the second ranking member on the Armed Services Committee, so I'm very sensitive to this. And I responded to his first uh, uh, defense cut uh, budget in 2009 from Afghanistan. And he, his first one was uh, uh, budget cut was cutting the Army's future combat system, uh, cutting the missile defense system, ending the production of our only uh, fifth generation fighter, the F-22, and the C-17, our lift capacity, our premium lift capacity, and postponing development of a new combat search and rescue helicopter in the next generation bomber. The next two rounds of defense cuts included downsizing the force, canceling the Marine Corps' expeditionary fighting vehicle, and slowing down production of the F-35. Uh, tonight we heard President Obama's vision for the future of American manufacturing. The best thing for American manufacturing is for the President, President Obama, to get out of the way. Uh, the Obama administration's uh, overly intrusive regulations are killing jobs in America. Now, what he couldn't achieve through legislation, he's trying to achieve through heavy-handed regulations. He's moving forward with a plan to regulate greenhouse gases through the EPA. Remember, I fought that, the legislation, uh, for, for 10 years, and we finally won. He couldn't get cap-and-trade done through, uh, through uh, uh, legislation, so he's trying to do it through regulations. That would be a cost to the American families of 300 to $400 billion a year. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. The barrage of regulations coming out of the EPA, taxing electricity and gasoline, have become known as the train wreck for the incredible harm they'll do to jobs and the economy here in the United States of America. In fact, the cost of um, all the, uh, these regulations put together add up to about the same as the Obama's national deficit, which is a recipe for economic disaster. That's the cost of regulations. President Obama continued his, his uh, double speak on energy. That's why he's been touting oil and gas uh, production so much lately. As his re-election approaches, he understands uh, that, uh, especially in a weak economy, Americans want the hundreds and thousands of jobs, the affordable energy prices, and the increased energy security that fossil fuel development brings. But while he talks the talk, his actions clearly show that he's still determined to shut down oil, gas, and coal development so the energy prices will, as he said himself, necessarily sky uh, skyrocket. Now imagine, tonight, you heard him uh, make these statements, and yet, let me read to you what his, uh, some quotes from his administration. The, uh, uh, way back in the beginning, the, his Treasury Department said, now listen to this, they said, to the extent the lower tax rate encourages overproduction of oil and gas, it is detrimental to long-term energy security. What he's saying there, and this is back when he first got in, we got to kill oil and gas. Uh, his own energy uh, secretary, Stephen Chu, said, somehow we've got to have, figure out how to boost the price of gasoline at the pumps to the levels in Europe. That's $8 a gallon. So that's what this president has been trying to do for the last three years. And so tonight, he tried to make it look as if he is doing something to, to help uh, oil and gas. And just last week, to appease his global warming alarmist friends, he killed the Keystone Pipeline that would have provided uh, in excess of 20,000 jobs and increased energy security while providing a means to get more domestic energy to the marketplace. Now, we heard quite a bit tonight about fairness. Tonight's speech makes it clear that his view of America and our values is vastly uh, different. 
uh, from how our founding fathers uh, viewed this great nation. He believes that fairness should be mandated and imposed through bigger government and more regulations, higher taxes, and wealth redistribution. I, I couldn't disagree more. American values are not found in government imposing fairness, but rather through increased liberty, personal responsibility, and individual charity. The unique greatness of America is found in the goodness of our people, not in the strong arm of government. Now, as usual, he was eloquent. Some of the things he said tonight, like reforming our tax code and investing in our nation's infrastructure, they sounded good. But as usual, despite his eloquence, his actions defy his rhetoric. He's already had three years of record-setting deficits, and now he wants more government programs and even more spending. We can't allow that to happen. 